Hello everyone, I am back once again, and this is going to be week 8 of the G7 ML League. My opponent for this match is going to be Torvex, representing the Blazik Gomp team. And I'm not going to go over the drafts honestly, just because, I mean, we already have a replay right here, and you can see a good um, number of my opponent's draft basically. If you want to see like all of the team's um, drafts that I've had for, um, you know, for the season of the G7 ML League, um, on the final week, I'll actually drop a link in the description below to the doc that was used for this league, obviously. Right there, you'll have a list of all the drafts if you want to actually see it, honestly. But personally, for me, I don't really feel the need to explain the drafts, honestly. In fact, given that we're using the the traditional replay post-commentary style to present this uh, match, I should be, you know, like, I should treat this more like any other Wi-Fi match, if anything. So, yeah, and just focus on the, the teams at hand right now which in my opponent's case is going to consist of an Agron, a Garchomp, a Blaziken with the speed boost by the way, a Dugtrio with the Arena Trap ability, because you know this is an Uber's League reminder obviously, and Mega Medicam which you know is not Uber obviously but that mon is pretty potent as well because you know huge power and whatnot, and then Greninja, Battle Bond obviously, and which means that if it kills anything, Ash Greninja which I don't want to deal with obviously. And um, Garchomp is particularly scary as well as the Dugtrio because this time around I did not bring Skarmory and even if I did bring Skarmory, Dugtrio in most cases is not going to let me switch out a lot of the time so, you know, the sooner we get that thing out of the way the better obviously. This match was kind of interesting honestly. This was a match that even though the match or the team was scary, I kind of was confident in being able to win this match. But things started to kind of spiral out of control, and you're going to see right now how that ended up happening, honestly. And I just, I can only say this is just insane, honestly. But here we go. So my opponent is going to lead off with the Agron. So already this match is already getting kind of scary, because I led with Tabulili for this one. I wasn't expecting the Agron lead, honestly. So I kind of was just like, oh damn. Although, now that I think about it, maybe I should have because, you know, Agrons could just want to lead just to get the rocks up, honestly. And it can take any hit with Sturdy, you know? However, this thing, instead of going for um, the, the rocks, he actually ends up going for the rock polish as I switch in my Lodic here. And I get my Flame Orb up once again, because Flame Orb once again proving to be very, very useful. Here he's going to go for a Head Smash and Miss, which allows me to just go for a Skull without taking any damage, which is nice. Uh, this Agron actually ends up, you know, going down completely. It didn't even have Sturdy, which was kind of shocking to me, honestly. But I also didn't think Scald would actually be able to take out this Agron entirely, since I don't think this Milotic is offensively invested whatsoever. I could be wrong, though. I actually don't remember what the investments were for this Milotic, if I'm being completely honest with you. But either way, now he's going to bring out the Mega Medicam now. And this thing, Thunder Punch after Mega Evolution, is going to be obviously painful, obviously. Thanks to the Marvel skill, it doesn't do a lot more damage, but, you know, um, it is what it is. I'm going to go for the Scald right here, and thankfully, I get the burn, because after here, like, after this Scald, I get a little bit of chip damage for the burn, which is going to be kind of huge, honestly. This thing is going to switch it up to High Jump Kick, which is a lot more powerful, I think, than uh, than Thunder Punch. And, but thanks to the burn and the marble skill boost from my Lodic, it does absolutely nothing, surprisingly enough. I still kind of expected it to do a little bit more considering the base 130 power that High Jump Kick has. And it being stab on on Mega Medicam with huge power and whatnot. But yeah, anyways, thanks to the burn, obviously, I was able to take out the Mega Medicam. And now comes the Dugtrio, which, yeah, it's just going to take out my Milotic. I can't switch this thing out, obviously, because, you know, Arena Trap is most likely the ability. In fact, I think I did confirm that when I tried switching out, obviously. So, yeah, but here, I'm going to send out Hitmontop now, just to get the Intimidate, and kind of force him to switch out, honestly. And if he doesn't switch out, I'm just going to land a Toxic on this thing, which will put this thing on a timer as well. He is going to be switching it out, and he's going to go into the Garchomp here, which is fine, because if I get a Toxic on this thing, it would be really, really nice. Unfortunately, I do miss it, so me being kind of stubborn here, decide to stay in with this Hitmontop until I get this um, this Toxic, or even like just lose this Hitman top entirely, because if it misses this Toxic, obviously I was just going to let this thing go down, obviously, because I'm sick and tired of missing moves when I need them to land, you know? But yeah, I do get the Toxic off now, obviously. 
and because of that, um, yeah, obviously I had to take a, an, an unnecessary earthquake, because I could have just switched out into something else, honestly, after this, but, you know. Now I do it, and I switched into Zygarde. Now, the reason why I switched into Zygarde right here was because um, I wanted to actually scout this Garchomp for a bit. He was constantly going for Earthquake and no other move, so I kind of wanted to see if he would actually be able to switch it up to Dragon Claw or Outrage or whatever Dragon move he has, honestly. That way it can confirm to me that it's um, not Choice Scarfed, and if he keeps on going for Earthquake, then it's most likely Choice Scarfed or Choice Bandit, I don't know. I honestly couldn't tell you because I'm personally not too, like, aware of the calculations for the damage output and whatnot in Earthquake after a choice ban. I assume it'd do a lot more than what it did earlier to my hit on top, so probably I was under the impression that it could be Scarfed, honestly. But as you can see, he did end up going for the Dragon Claw right here as I switched back into hit on top to get the Intimidate. And this actually forces him to switch out and go back into the Doug's Trio, which is fine with me, honestly, because I get to get some nice damage here with the Mac Punch. Now, looking at the damage here, it did look like it could be a two-hit KO, actually. So, um, I was thinking, okay, that's fine. As long as I get this thing to its lowest point in HP, I should be fine to finish it off with anything else. However, um, this Mac Punch ends up being able to just shut this thing down completely, despite Mac Punch not being technician boosted because it's actually an Intimidate hit on top, as you already saw. So, I was actually shocked that I was able to even take out that Doug Trio. However, here comes the Greninja, and this thing, obviously, I did go for Mac Punch, but this thing went for Water Shuriken, wisely enough. And this means that now I'm going to basically proc its Battle Bond ability, which means this thing is now going to become Ash Greninja. Now, I was thinking of sending in Zeraora here to just finish this thing off with a Plasma Fist, because you're going to see right here that um, this thing was Life Orbed, as you can see. So I was thinking, I should probably send it in. Instead, I ended up sending in the Tapu Lili because I was actually kind of afraid that Water Shuriken with guaranteed 3 hits, boosted by Life Orb, boosted by Stab, and I think it does get a boost in like base power as well after um, transforming into Ash Greninja. I'm not sure on that one, but I just know that it becomes very, very powerful, and you know, if I sent in Zero Aura, it was probably going to hit me with that, and I wasn't sure if I'd be able to take it or not, and I didn't want to risk it, so I just sent in Tapu Lili, which will negate the Water Shuriken altogether, and you know, in the same, in the process, also taking out the, you know, the Ash Greninja, which I do. And now he's going to bring in the Blaziken, and I actually do switch out here. Now, the reason why I did this was because um, I didn't want to lose Tapu Lili just yet, and I ended up sending in the, um, the Zera Aura. I was also kind of hoping that my opponent would just get kind of desperate and not go for the Sword Stance upon switching, but he ends up doing so. And, you know, I try to attack this thing with Plasma Fist, and he just goes for Protect for the Speed Boost. And now... This Blaziken is now in the position um, that it becomes basically broken, basically. Because now he's at plus two, he's at in speed and attack and high jump kick he has. So that's going to basically basically be the whole game, which is something that I was thinking would be the case here because I lose Zera Aura like nothing. It didn't get to do anything. I can go for priority attacks, which I did have on both Zera Aura and Mega Metagross because... Um, the Psychic Terrain from Tapu Lily isn't going to let me go for Quick Attack or Bullet Punch in this case with Metagross. So yeah, when I sent in Tapu Lily, I kind of thought that this was maybe a mistake, honestly, against the, the Greninja, but you're going to see later that that was kind of what I had to do, honestly. Yeah, here I sent out this, um, this Metagross. I was personally hoping he would be compelled to switch it up to Flare Blitz because I think High Jump Kick might have been enough to take it out. Anyway, the Mega Metagross, but it also had the chance of missing, which if it did, I'd be able to finish it off with an Earthquake, and I don't think he wanted that. So here, now he takes out my Metagross, and now I have to send out the Zygarde. Now here, if I don't KO this thing with E-Speed, then that's basically the whole game. Thankfully, it does, and it's only thanks to the fact that um, this thing went for Flare Blitz and got recoil damage. Otherwise, I probably would not have been able to take this thing out in one shot, honestly. So yeah, that's kind of crazy, honestly. His last Pokemon is going to be the Garchomp. I go for ESP just to get additional damage on that. And because I already know that this thing is not Scarfed, obviously I just have to let this Zygarde go down as he goes for the Earthquake right here. And I'm just going to send in Tapu Lili. And because my Tapu Lili is Choice Scarfed, as you saw earlier on the Greninja, I should be able to outspeed this Garchomp and still um, take it out, basically. Which means that I basically win this match, which is pretty cool, honestly. I honestly thought that that Mega... Or not Mega, jeez. I was going to say Mega Blaziken. It's because Mega Blaziken also gets speed boost, by the way. But yeah, uh, I honestly thought that the Blaziken was going to finish me off. 
and just basically sweep and I thought I basically choked this match and just threw it basically but no I, I, I still did the right thing in sending in Tapalil against the the um, Battle Bond Greninja because um, again I was not too confident that Zero Aura would be able to take a boosted water shuriken with guaranteed three hits there's also the you know the possibility of it critting one with one of those hits and then zero aura would be gone completely and i didn't want that in fact having zero aura kind of worked out for me in the end because it helped me stall out the um the psychic terrain turns f from tapalila you know so that zygarde can eventually come in and take out the blaze again but this also might have come down to um whether he even went for Flare Blitz on my Metagross or not, because I think High Jump Kick might have still been enough to take out Mega Metagross at plus two, honestly. It's 130 base attack at plus two. That's also stab. And Blaze against attack stat is pretty good. It's like 120 base attack. So all of that combined, I was almost certain that would have actually taken out my Metagross, but he did run the risk of missing and he was behind. So I don't think he, it was in his interest to go for that. So he felt compelled to go for it. it if this guy was a bit more of a ballsy trainer, he probably would have gone for the high jump kick. But who knows, maybe he doesn't do damage calls kind of like I don't very much either, honestly. And probably just figured uh, it probably wasn't going to kill. <laughs> Even though I think it might have, honestly. So as a result, he went for Flare Blitz instead. And that in itself, I think, ended up saving me this match. Because otherwise, I think I would have lost and pretty badly, actually. I would have just gotten, like, reverse 4 would kind of a thing. Because I already had a, a couple months above him already. So I kind of was like you know just gonna get reversaled in a way that was very very devastating but yeah that's gonna be the match for um for week eight of the g7 ml league and this might actually be the last wi-fi match that i showcase for pokemon ultra sun and ultra moon but i'm not gonna explain why in this video i'm gonna explain it in the next um battle video for the g7 ml league which by the way is actually gonna be the the final week actually because i forgot to mention this throughout the the, the season that this season consists of nine weeks with the playoffs consisting of, I believe, three rounds. Yeah, I think it's like quarters and then semis and then the finals, something like that. I forgot how many playoffs teams were there. I think there was like eight of them or something. I don't know. But, um, yeah. So, um, um, yeah, that's something I figured you guys should know. So, it's not like this is not the end, but I'll explain why this may be the, the last Wi-Fi match regardless, obviously. Um, for now, thank you all for watching this match. Hope to catch you guys for the next match whenever I get to it. For now, just take it easy and have yourselves a good one.